lisp that together. What was that? What? Great. Cut. It was a cat. Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have one of my favorite recipes from What's for Dessert. This is my banoffee pudding. It's a little bit of a play off of the idea of like a British pudding, which kind of just means any dessert, but it's a version of banoffee pie, which is a British dessert that's like a tart of bananas and dulce de leche. And in this case, I'm putting it all together in a pudding and layering it in a trifle dish. It's so delicious and I love banana flavored desserts. And this is a really good one. I first saw Chef April Bloomfield make banoffee pie on an episode of Mind of a Chef on PBS, which is a great show. It's very simple. Sliced bananas, dulce de leche, which is basically like a milk caramel, and then topped with whipped cream. And that's pretty much it. This version is kind of all of those flavors, but in a pudding form. Think of it as a hybrid between like American Southern style banana pudding and British banoffee pie. So this is just banana and coffee. Toffee. Well, okay, so banoffee. Banoffee is a, what's it called? A portmanteau. Isn't that what that's called when it combines two words? Banoffee is a portmanteau of banana and toffee, not coffee. Although it's not really toffee, it's actually this, it's actually dulce de leche. So that's what I have right here. I love banana flavored desserts, but I feel like banana needs to be balanced out by something else. So in this case, that combination of dulce de leche and banana is so, so delicious. And I cannot resist combining bananas with sour cream in some way. It is just the most delicious combination. And I also have here, these are actually Biscoff cookies. The recipe calls for either digestive biscuits to really kind of like play up that idea of it being a kind of spin on a British recipe or graham crackers. But I thought why not do Biscoff because it's that same really light crispy texture. It's just lightly sweet. That kind of spice flavor is gonna go really well with everything. Ingredients. I have overripe banana, it could be a little riper, but a large banana, I don't have, this is more of a medium, so I have one and a half. Two thirds of a cup of store-bought dulce de leche. This just comes from the can. Cornstarch, a little bit of granulated sugar. Four egg yolks plus one whole egg. Two and a quarter cups whole milk. Then I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter divided, two tablespoons in one and then four. A couple of teaspoons of vanilla extract, some kosher salt. Then for assembly, I have six ounces of, in this case, Biscoff cookies, but again, Recipe calls for digestive biscuits, which are delicious and very much like a graham cracker, or you can use graham crackers. I have four tablespoons of additional dulce de leche for assembly and then my cream and my sour cream for whipping. Special equipment, you'll need a couple things. You'll need a saucepan, which I have over here for cooking your pudding, of course, a couple bowls and a whisk. And then for assembly, I have a trifle bowl, which I just like bought on eBay. It was really inexpensive. It's a sort of footed dessert dish. You don't have to have this. You could just assemble it in a glass bowl or you could assemble individually. It's really up to you. Then I have a hand blender. You could use a regular blender, but hand blender is super convenient because I'm just gonna blend everything right in the saucepan. And that's it. So the first step actually is to, I'm gonna caramelize the banana. One thing I've noticed and while I was testing this recipe, the proportions seemed really off in terms of flavor. I was putting a lot of banana in and it was almost too banana-y and I was losing the other flavors. So I decided to cut back on the banana a little bit and I actually added this step where I'm cooking the banana like in this, in butter and it's caramelizing and getting really soft. And not only does it help to soften the banana so that it blends really smoothly into the pudding, but it takes off some of that raw banana flavor, which is not super appealing. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up my banana into just sort of like little rounds. If you can use a more ripe banana than this, you know the flavor of a green banana? That's what I'm basically trying to get rid of through this cooking process, that kind of like almost astringent flavor. Basically you want speckles and no green on your banana. I have a medium saucepan here. Try to cook any kind of pudding or custard in a nice heavy saucepan. I'm gonna start on medium heat. I'm gonna add my butter. 
This is just two tablespoons. Again, I have the other four tablespoons reserved. That's gonna get stirred into the pudding at the end. This butter is just getting nice and foamy. Now I'm gonna add my banana pieces. A really ripe banana might start to turn really mushy, which is totally fine. A slightly firmer banana will hold its shape a little better. But either way, I'm just gonna cook this initially to get some color on that banana to start to kind of caramelize it. Okay, so this is starting to caramelize. I gotta turn the temperature down. And they're kind of breaking down, which is what you want. Is that browning butter or just browning banana? It's both actually. And it's also browning starches on the bottom of the saucepan, which will get kind of scraped up and incorporated into the pudding. So that's lots of good flavor. Once a banana starts to soften, I like to just kind of start to mash it against the sides of the saucepan. I'm going to add my other pudding ingredients. I'm gonna add that salt. The like caramelized banana plus the dulce de leche loves salt, plus the sour cream. It's so good in here. It's like a little bit salty. Then I'm gonna add my dulce de leche. Then I'm gonna add my milk. So this is my base of my pudding. And now I want this to very slowly come up to the point where it's just under a simmer. But before I let that happen, I'm going to blend it. That just combines everything really, really evenly. So I'm just gonna give it a little buzz. And then that basically takes this kind of weird separated mixture and turns it into this beautiful, super smooth, caramel colored mixture. So I still have this on medium-ish heat. I'm gonna let this continue to warm up I want it to be steaming and kind of just rippling under the surface, not quite at a simmer. While that dulce de leche banana milk mixture is coming up, I'm going to whisk my eggs plus my sugar and cornstarch. So most of the sweetness from the recipe comes from the dulce de leche itself, which obviously is caramel is you know made from sugar. So I'm adding just a little bit of additional sugar to blend with the eggs. And this is a step called blanching and tempering. So I'm gonna whisk my cornstarch, which in addition to the eggs is gonna provide thickening for the pudding. I'm gonna whisk this together, which actually does help to prevent clumping. Then I'll add those four yolks plus one whole egg. Generally, you make pudding or custard with yolks, but I think adding a whole egg that includes the white helps to provide like a little bit of a lighter texture, which I really like. So I often do a combination of yolks and whole eggs in pudding and then just whisk slowly to incorporate and once you have the starches incorporated you can whisk more vigorously i know you're like using your left hand just to be contrarian mm -hmm. <laughs> but i'm left-handed <laughs> you know three out of the five members of my family are left-handed so growing up i was like yeah everyone's left-handed this is done my milk mixture is just barely like i'm seeing some movement under the surface so this is at the point where I want it. I am going to slowly stream this milk mixture into my eggs. So once you've poured around two thirds of that warm milk mixture into your eggs, everything's gonna go back into the saucepan. Working off the heat, I mean, I have it on the burner, but I'm working on induction so that it's not on. You're going to whisk the egg mixture back into the saucepan and give it a little scrape. Now we're going to cook the pudding. So eggs were tempered, added back in. So I'm cooking this on medium heat. It's already pretty hot because we brought that milk mixture up to just under a simmer. So it doesn't take very long to cook. It'll take you a few minutes and I am whisking constantly. So the constant whisking is to equalize the temperature throughout and to make sure that I'm not overcooking this mixture at the bottom or around the sides where it's gonna be hotter. So you don't wanna walk away from this. And the constant agitation is also ensuring that the eggs are going to cook evenly. I can see that this is getting close. It's thickening. It's starting to hold the marks of the whisk. I'm going to pause whisking just for a few seconds and check for bubbling underneath the surface. And it's gonna be slow bubbling because this mixture is so thick. See how it's bubbling under there? That means that I'm at a boil. And so I'm gonna whisk really vigorously for another 10 to 15 seconds. I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm gonna pour it into my medium bowl that I set aside. 
when you're getting pudding out of a saucepan, I often say you can scrape around the sides, but don't scrape the bottom really well because that's where you might have some little overcooked areas. This is a little bit overcooked. So I'm not gonna scrape that into the bowl. See how it doesn't look quite so smooth? There's some texture in there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like overcooked egg. It only ends up being a couple tablespoons, but I just leave that out. If you do get some curdling and it gets into the bowl, don't worry about it. It's going to smooth out because we're gonna whisk it really well with this butter. So the final step for the pudding is to whisk in your reserved four tablespoons of butter. And ideally it should be cold. That just helps to chill down the pudding a little bit and cut into pieces. If you had some of that curdling, this will help to smooth it out. If you find that your pudding is constantly kind of overcooking in places, it I would say definitely turn your heat down. That's part of it. And make sure that you have like a decent quality saucepan. It could be the, the kitchen equipment that's causing you some issues. So I've added all the butter and it has melted into the pudding. The last thing, um, my vanilla extract, just two teaspoons. Go ahead and whisk that in. We have this like beautiful, glossy, super smooth, silky pudding, but it's really, really hot. So we wanna cool this down. This whole dessert is assembled almost like a trifle Often, like southern style banana pudding, you assemble everything hot um, and it's served warm and it's baked. This is a chilled dessert. So it has something in common with southern style banana pudding, but not really the same thing at all. I'm just gonna give the walls a little bit of a scrape. You can transfer this to a lidded container to chill it, or you can just take a piece of plastic wrap and press it directly onto the surface of the pudding. You just wanna make sure that the surface is covered because it will develop a little bit of a skin as it chills. So I'm gonna get this into the fridge. This should ideally have four hours minimum to chill down so the whole thing can get cold before we assemble. So I'm gonna get this in the fridge. I have a version that I made last night that's chilled and totally set. This will firm up quite a bit as it, as it cools down. Um, and in the meantime, I am going to whip my sour cream and heavy cream. So I'm ready for assembly and I'll pull out the pudding and we're gonna put this thing together. I did not call this out under special equipment, but a hand mixer will be very helpful in whipping the cream plus sour cream. You could do it by hand, especially if you had a big whisk and a big bowl, but it's a combined total of about two cups of cream, so it'll take a little while. I'm working in a large bowl, so then the sour cream goes in, and I'm not sweetening this. The pudding plus the cream plus the cookies get layered with a little bit of dulce de leche. So it's, it's, you know, there's plenty of sweetness in here, but I like having that contrast between unsweetened cream and a sweeter component. You'll probably notice that like most of the recipes that have whipped cream are, it's not sweetened at all. Start on low and you can kind of gradually increase the speed as the mixture thickens. Don't go full blast because you'll splatter it everywhere. If you have a nice big bowl to work in, that's really helpful. This is probably actually bigger than is necessary, but you don't want to work on anything small because you really will splatter it everywhere. The sour cream is a cultured dairy product, which is what gives it that sour flavor. And that helps to stabilize the entire whipped cream mixture. So just plain heavy cream when whipped will eventually deflate. Those little air bubbles will collapse and it will become liquidy again. And when you add sour cream to it, it helps to just stabilize everything. When you layer this together, it can hang out in the fridge and that cream stays nice and light. Once you start to see the beaters leave a sharp trail that's really defined and the mixture doesn't just kind of like settle back onto itself, that's how you know you're getting toward medium or stiff peaks. I'm gonna keep going a little bit. I looked at the recipe, it does say stiff peaks. So I'm gonna go a little bit firmer. The timing, if you're on high speed between medium and stiff peaks is very short. So just FYI, you don't wanna overbeat it. Here is this pudding that I made last night. I'm gonna grab my whisk. You can see it's set up really nicely. This is just the whisk from cooking that more recent batch of pudding. So it's set, and I wanna whisk it just to smooth out the consistency. This will make it a little bit easier to assemble. So I'm gonna start by layering about a quarter of the pudding into the bottom of my trifle dish. The recipe just calls for any two quart dish. So it could be an actual trifle dish, it could even be a shallow baking dish, and you're just gonna do thinner layers. It's really up to you. Obviously something with glass walls is gonna look really nice. 
So then I want us to just spread this in an even layer. Could you make a bunch of minis? Oh yeah, you could definitely, actually the first couple times I tested this recipe, I assembled them individually. You just do them in like water glasses. Whether you're using digestive biscuits or Biscoff or graham crackers, you'll just have to break those into smaller pieces, but that's really it. Okay, so the pudding goes down, then about a quarter of the whipped cream mixture right on top. Now I'm gonna put down a layer of my cookies. You can break them to fit if you'd like. If you want perfect even layers, I suppose you could get a weight of the, all of your components and then like scale out, measure out a quarter exactly by weight and then do all the assembly, but who has that kind of time? So now I have a quarter cup or four tablespoons of additional dulce de leche. I'm gonna take about a tablespoon it doesn't really drizzle because it's very thick, but I'm going to just kind of dollop it over the cookies. I like that it makes like little pockets of caramelly areas. You can kind of spread it around the cookies if you want with the back of a spoon so that it gets on more areas. So I'm gonna repeat that layering process using the same quantities of everything. And I end up with four layers of cream and pudding separated by three layers of cookies. So it, I end with a, this nice, beautiful cream on top. Obviously this trifle dish has a bigger capacity than what I really need. The capacity, if you want to fill to the top, will be about two quarts. So that's a common size for a lot of bowls. But it looks pretty good. I have my final layer of cream on top and now I just have a little bit of that dulce de leche left over. And the final step is to swirl it onto the surface of the cream. So just kind of do your dollops. The swirl isn't really coming in like, like, it's, it, supposed like it's supposed to. Like it did, maybe it was a different brand of dulce de leche that I used. Don't tell anyone, but I'm gonna cheat it a little bit. Water bath it? No. Add a little milk? You could thin it out, but I've, when I try to thin out dulce de leche, it requires so much to thin, that it's like, you've added so much liquid, it's almost not worth it. The banoffee pudding is fully assembled. The next step is to just let everything chill out and those cookies will hydrate the cream and the pudding will both get really cold and set and you'll be able to spoon into it. So I just wanna cover this and get it in the fridge. And it should take around, I think the recipe says like either three or four hours. So you wanna do this a little bit ahead of time, which is really nice. So if you're having company over, you can get this done in the morning or even the night before and it can just kinda of hang out. So I'm gonna cover it and get it into the fridge. Does it look stupid that it's like half full? No. Uh, okay, good. It is missing Oreos. More cookies oh, it's on top. Not missing or Oreos. More worms. worms. Not missing worms. No worms. All right, this is the plastic wrap that was on the pudding. Let's see if I can reuse this. Have you ever made gummy worms? No. Would you ever no, thank try you, please. a version? Wasn't there like a kid's toy where that you where you made gummy worms? Creepy Am I making crawlers. this up? Creepy, Creepy crawlers, crawlers, right? Oh my god. But you couldn't eat them. Or you no, did eat them. No, 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 they were not edible. They were not edible. I see, you just made like a toy. <laughs> okay. Cut! Blintzes, right, blintzes. Sweet cheese blintzes. Action. Blintzes are such a good food. Appropriate for breakfast, but also definitely feels like dessert. Back to Benafi. Action. How many hours would was this in there? Three? Yeah, about. Maybe, okay. So the... Pudding has been sitting, hydrating, softening, all those flavors are melding. I think the best way to serve this is just to spoon it into bowls. So I'm gonna spoon from the side. And you don't have to necessarily go all the way down because I'm repeating a lot of layers, but you definitely wanna get at least a few layers of cookie and pudding. So I can tell by the way the spoon goes through that this is at a nice texture. Time to taste. My mouth is watering. Mm. I think that this is a dessert that's gonna convince people who think they don't like banana flavor, David Tamarkin, to enjoy a banana dessert. Banana can be such a strong flavor, but here it's so well matched by the dulce de leche, by the, the cookies, by that sour cream. They go together so seamlessly. It's the perfect amount of sweetness. I feel like the first thing you get is all those caramelly notes, then you get the banana, then it, you get the tang from the sour cream. Smooth, dense pudding, light, tangy whipped cream. The cookies retain a little bit of their texture. Incredibly delicious. Mm. I just want to eat it. Mm. I just really like sour cream. I like sour cream so much. Obviously this feeds a crowd. 
This would easily feed 12, I think. It's so tasty. This is really a banana dessert to suit everyone. You, ha you know, dulce de leche, it's so good. And also I think kind of impressive looking when all assembled together. Thank you so much for watching. It's so fun to bring you recipes from What's for Dessert. This is from the Stovetop Desserts chapter, which is one of my favorites. Hope you enjoy. You can make it all year long. Really kind of emblematic of the simple but super delicious recipes in the book. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I don't have lunch today.